Welcome to the DL Gaming Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm Nick. I feel like I'm not ready. You guys threw me right into this episode. Like, we're getting too good at the... Oh, you know what it is? Christian's not here, and he uses a lot of words. Bobby is just like, <laughs> necessary words only. We he, we got ready with 15 words, dude. Christian does yeah, it with like, 175. He's like, ready, record. And then we do our thing, and like, we're done. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I tend to yeah. be pretty you know, concise. Sniper's trying to give us like motivational speeches and shit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, telling yeah. us like a quarterly report. I'm like, whatever, man, let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, we're going to be talking about Spell Rogue, Bellatro, and War Thunder. But before we do, I just wanted to remind everybody that we have a mailing address. It is in our Discord. You can get there by going to dlgaming.net and clicking on the Discord link. So you can actually mail us stuff. Um, I believe we have someone from uh, Europe who wants to mail us some chocolates. So uh, we will be expecting that. And uh, whatever else you guys want to send us, a um, handwritten love letter. I guess you missed Valentine's Day, but um, anything anything you can think of, you can mail us. No anthrax or... 55-gallon drum of lube. 55-gallon <laughs> drum. It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. It's more yeah, than you, you think. You never have to buy lube again in your life. I'm True. sure that goes bad at some point. I don't know what the shelf Ooh, life yeah, is. Yeah, right after you days. use it, dude. That's what it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Nick, what is going on with the camera there? <laughs> Sorry, I just I just fixed it. It started tilting all of a sudden. I made stupid cats behind it. Uh, all right. So let's get into it. We're going to move into our worth a ping section. So this is where we talk about anything that we want to talk about, um, but quickly. I, I, I feel yeah. like that's what we should do here. Uh, I say that, and yet I have three things I want to bring up, and none of them are going to be quick. <laughs> that, that's okay. Um, the first one is, so last week, <clears throat> we uh, had some confusion about Star Wars 1313. Did it turn into Jedi Fallen Order? So I did a little bit of research, and it turns out, no, there is no definite information. So I was basing my information off of, I thought I heard it in the book Blood, Sweat, and Pixel, by Jason Schreer, but I re-listened to that chapter and I did some Googling and it turns out there's actually no direct connection beto- between the two of them. There's just a lot of people out there like me who just assume that because when you look at the game side by side, they have a lot of the same, uh, the, the sliding mechanic is the same, the wall climbing, there's some things about them that look very similar. But I guess all Star Wars stuff looks similar. So what actually happened, the whole chapter in Blood, Sweat, and Pixels was about when uh, Disney bought bought, um, Lucasfilm and they got LucasArts in that deal and they canceled all the active projects, which I believe was just two of them. And one of them was that game, Star Wars 1313. Some of those developers left and joined uh, another team with, uh, they joined Visceral and uh, they were under EA at the time, and they were working on a game called Project Ragtag, which was a new Star Wars game. But turns out that one got canceled as well, and then two years later, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order came out. So wanted to clear up the confusion on that one. Question for you guys. What is going on with that um, that smuggling third-person game? Uh, That's Star still Wars going. Game? Oh, the one, but it's the not one out yet, world. right? I didn't miss it. No, 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 no. Is, are we a long way off? And what's it called? Star Wars it's Outlaws. Like, yeah, I think it's like we're like eight months away. Ooh, that's a good amount. Uh, okay. It's got a 2024 release date. And you know what's interesting about that? So Star Wars 1313, it, it went through many different phases and ideas of what it was going to be, and then it changed into something else. But at one point, it was going to be a game that sounded very similar to Star Wars Outlaws. So Outlaws sounds kind of like an open world RPG, maybe a little GTA in there, where you're a smuggler and you're doing jobs for a bunch of other people. And Star Wars 1313 at one point was, uh, you were a bounty hunter, basically doing the same thing, just doing jobs for everybody else, working your way up through the criminal empire. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds more fun to me at least. I don't know, but I'm usually the bad guy. Yeah, well, I think we'd all like a Star Wars. Well, I don't know if we would all, but I'd like a Star Wars game that wasn't just Jedi lightsaber, like, you know, the usual Can you imagine a Star Wars game at the scale and detail of, like, Red Dead Redemption 2? 
Yeah, man, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, that like was they the, did consider doing that, and they interviewed. They wanted to make a Star Wars GTA, basically. That's how um, thirteen thirteen started off. Then they started interviewing uh, the people at Rockstar, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna need like millions and millions of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of employees. Like, we just can't afford to do it. We'll never get approved for this." So, then they they narrowed their scope onto something smaller. But nowadays, who knows? I mean, that could happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, layoffs and employees and stuff, uh, Sega just laid off over 240 employees in Europe and in other studios. Uh, That's not the shocking news of the whole thing. Uh, They have released their uh, developer Relic Entertainment from their uh, card, which is a big deal. They made uh, a couple Warhammer games uh, like um, Dawn of War and Space Marine 1. And they still are making a bunch of like relative games as well. Um, it's I don't like I don't know how to feel them about from it because contract they released them from their contract. They no longer are like paying for their developments and stuff like that. Relic is its own company now with no interest. They don't have a publisher. It could be um, good for them or bad for them. Probably. That's what I was about to say. I'm like it could be good for them, and not to be that guy. Like I like some Sega products. I play Total War, for example. Um. But Sega has always been a company uh, that is adherent to their uh, to their investors, and so like hopefully this gives like Relic Entertainment more freedom to do what they want. Maybe they want to you know develop new shit. Maybe they want to make Dawn of War four and actually make it good, not like Dawn of War three. Um, but we'll never know. We'll see. We it's a wait and see kind of situation. I'm just going to run down this real quick. I mean, um, Utility Software, I don't even know who they are. 1,800 people. Twitch, 500. Discord, 200. Uh, Lost Boys, I don't know, I'm trying to do the ones that I know. But there's a lot. There's. A, I'm just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Uh, most of them are like less than 100 uh, that I'm seeing here. Metaverse 70, uh, Riot Games, 530. Um, yep. they can't, uh, I think, I believe they canceled one of their big projects too. People can fly 30 plus. And, and this is like gaming. I mean, big game like these people, um, is extremely profitable. Like uh, people are on the uptake. Um, Microsoft just laid off 2000 people. Um, so you could just keep going down this list. It's on Kutaku. It's uh gaming layoffs for 2024. That's this year guys. Just in the last two months. Yeah. Actually, you know what would be helpful in those month. numbers is to know how many employees they started with. So I just looked up Riot Games. You said they laid off 500. And no, no. Uh, I think it was 2000. 2000. Yeah, 2000. No, that was Microsoft. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. No, Riot Games, according to, I don't know, <laughs> a Google search, uh, they have 4,200 employees in 2024. So yeah, that's like a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I think we're uh, we're in the green that this is um, AI, right? Well, I don't know. Uh, a lot of I don't it. know. Possibly. I th- I think it is. I mean, uh, I saw a CEO talking about how AI really helps you cut the fat. So, you know, things that are they're redundant and just need to be done on a schedule um, can just be taken over by AI. I mean. Uh, None of these, not all of these companies are doing poorly. Actually, a lot of them are highly profitable last year and this year. So it doesn't make sense for layoffs. But if you, there's a new technology that replaces people, then it does make sense. From my understanding, because uh, I have some people that in my like family that have been laid off from other like industries, AI uh, really, really, really optimizes project management. <clears throat> to the point where like project management is one of the number one people that are being laid off. Um, also like it's, I don't know that if, I don't know if you're laying off 400 project managers at riot, but there's, there's obviously things that it can do when it comes to like design and things like that. So <clears throat> I don't think yep. it's getting rid of writers, um, but we'll see. We'll see, well, they, we'll see the pro. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I have a very dear friend that's a project manager, so. Um, we'll see what what happens with him. You mean Chad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just say Chad. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So uh, anyway, speaking of uh, AI, uh, kind of Neuralink, uh, I, they came public with their first um, human Successful implant. Successful human. Yeah. Implant, yeah. So um, I don't know. It was maybe two months ago where where uh, Elon tweeted out, "Hey, uh, we we finished it," and he uh, this person's like recovering pretty well, and then now. Uh, the recording him and what he's able to do. He started off by just moving the cursor around on a computer, which I think have been done. That's been done before with like eyesight, like tracking, eye tracking and stuff. But this has been being done with mental, mm, mental, mental acuity. Like yeah, you have to like move your toe or acuity. your foot. Yeah, uh, you know he um, he says that. For certain movements, at first, he was, like, thinking about moving his left wrist. Of course, he can't move his left wrist. He's a quadriplegic. But um, that left wrist wrist thinking was a certain movement for the mouth. And then now it's second nature, but he had to retrain his brain. And um, the first video they came out with, it was him playing chess and civilization. You know, he's a gamer. And um, I thought, oh... That makes sense. All you have to do is move a cursor around for that, you know? Uh, but now there's a video of him playing Mario Kart, which is a completely different thing. And it was a short clip and whatever. I, I don't know. But, you know, th- they showed him hitting somebody in front of him with a green shell, like aiming in it and shooting it. And I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, nah, man, it was a pre-recorded video. I'm telling you. I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm kidding. So, so it is uh it's a very cool thing um they've done you know they've done this with monkeys and stuff before not Neuralink, but other companies where monkeys have fed themselves with robotic arms and stuff but i think we're getting to the difference between this and that is uh many fold um so i guess more info will be coming out hmm. all right uh last week i <laughs> All my stuff is going back to last week. Last (laughs) week, I couldn't remember the name of an article on PC Gamer that I said was really good. And I went back and found it. So I wanted to give that to everyone. The article is called, It's Just Cosmetics Monetization Doesn't Quite Hold Up Anymore. It's by Harvey Randall at PC Gamer. It's a good article. It's an interesting read. It's kind of an idea that I've, uh, or an opinion I've, I've shared. The whole, it's just cosmetics argument always felt a little weird to me, but I think he makes some good points in the article worth checking out. Um, But as I was looking for this, I came across yet another good article at least once a week. I'd say I find a a very interesting article on on PC Gamer. Um, And the one I found this week was by Tyler Wild, who has been with them for quite some time. Um, And he was interviewing some uh, someone at GDC about something called dark patterns. I'm like, Ooh, what's that dark patterns? That's an interesting name. Um, but the article is called lawyer warns game developers about unlawful game design as dark patterns lawsuits arise. So what it's about is this lawyer defends video game companies when they're getting sued, um, for using these things called dark patterns to sell in-game currency or, coerce the player into buying things they wouldn't ordinarily buy. So the question that a lot of people were asking him at GDC was, uh, does that affect gameplay too? Like, can you say there are dark patterns in gameplay, you know, to make the, the player more addicted to the game, spend more time on it than they would, and then eventually turn around and spend money on it? Um, and the article doesn't really have a direct answer, but it seems like that's something that could eventually become a thing. And they have a link to a website here called darkpattern.games that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, you can actually look up games and it'll tell you different things about them. So I just looked up a Star Wars game huh? here. Uh, what was the... Um, Battlefront? Not Battlefront, Galaxy of Heroes. So of course mobile games are going to be the most egregious, right? Yeah. So Yeah, those are real bad. Yeah, if you look up Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, um, it has playing by appointment, being forced to play according to the game schedule instead of yours, daily rewards, encourages return visits every day and punishes you for missing a day, grinding, being required to perform repetitive and tedious tasks to advance, 
infinite treadmill, impossible to win or complete the game, wait to play in game timers that you arbitrarily wait for something. So it's kind of, I don't know, this is all ideas and stuff that we've talked about before and we're aware of, but to see it all put so matter of factly and like having games categorized and labeled with all these things is actually really interesting to me. Yeah, for sure. Cause um, you, we, you mm-hmm. know, we've always used our own w- words, but now there's maybe semi-official words for all of these things. Uh, yeah, I, it's being quantified. I, yeah, every time I thought about like, Anytime they're taking advantage of human nature, that's definitely, um, what is it? Dark patterns. Um, but, uh, where's our lawyer for dark patterns in casino gaming? Where's, where's that guy? Cause, uh, <laughs> dude, the other day I saw it was a, it was a, it was a cell phone video of somebody recording somebody else playing a, um, a slot machine and the slot machine now has active transferring of money from your bank so you don't so have that, to that, get up anymore i will i will make i will clarify this okay so that video is actually false oh so first okay, of all it's, it's, an, it's an australia so that's okay. not real it's actually banned in a bunch of can, uh, countries okay um what it is is the person that had a ticket with a value of how much money they had in the bank in like the casino so you know how like you you know how like if you win at the craps table and they'll print out a ticket instead of giving you a bunch of chips because they don't want you working one yeah so the value is twenty thousand dollars yeah mind you it's Australian dollars so it's a little bit less it's like seven cents right (laughs) it's seventy cents of the dollar I think yeah um anyways they yeah he puts it in and the from the wording from the machine makes it look like it it says would you like to transfer. $20,000. $20,000. No, what it is is it's how much of that ticket do you yeah. want to put into this machine? Credit, basically. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, it's funny. I'm going to go on a little bird walk here. I actually remember reading a paper about the addictive quantity, like qualities of uh, games and where they kind of started in like the modern era. Um, do you know what? Can you guess what game in like the last 15 years that was considered the like Tetris. the. No, 15, not 50. Uh, uh, 15 years that like we see modern practices, but they've been like now times by like a million. I'll give you a hint. It's one of the most popular games of all time. Wait, I don't it's a shooter the too. question. That's a shooter? So it, Counter-Strike? It's a shooter. So No. It, it, so essentially the, the, the question is, what game do you think subtly added uh, like predatory functions to the game where it caused people to continue coming back? It was like the main point of their paper. It's a shooter. I can't think of it. I don't know. Fortnite? It's Call Call of Duty 4. Hmm. Modern Warfare 1. Uh, The reason being is the way it works is that they were were establishing like all the other Call of Duties and games before it. And the idea of a kill streak was technically like gambling to like the like from what people were being interviewed and how like it was activating in people's brains. Um, And the idea was that when you spawn in Call of Duty, if you're not playing Search and Destroy or like a round-based game, when you spawn, you would spawn in a random location. And because it's a random location, you could spawn behind people and get kill streaks, And then you can get the next kill streak and then the next kill streak. And there's a form of gambling like in, a, in your brain based off of where you spawn. Because you can spawn directly in the middle of the map and get killed immediately. Or you can spawn in the edge behind the whole entire enemy team and kill the rest of the people. Um, and the idea that got worse and worse and what we just lost Amelia. Uh, that got worse and worse when the, call, the second call of duty came out and they came out with, or second modern warfare com, uh, call of duty came out and they introduced new kill streaks that you could choose yourself. So you could increase the ante. So instead of three kills, you can send it to seven, nine and, and 15 or 11 and things like that. So it was like this predatory was, it was like an unknown predatory thing that was being added to games that, uh, they got really, really, really popular. It's why it, one of the reasons why Call of Duty is so good in the ADHD community that people love it so much. It's hmm. it's the quick succession of dying, resurrecting, gambling, getting kill streaks, and then the satisfaction of getting a kill streak. Interesting. I mean, I think a, a little chance is fun in video games. I'm going to be talking about one later with, that uses dice, but um, yeah, when it becomes predatory, that becomes a problem, and it's 
I mean, where, where do you distinguish between fun and, and predatory? Because, um, well, I guess, yeah, kill streaks is one thing. But I remember reading, like, in TF2, when you when you were on a kill streak uh, in TF2, your crit chance actually goes up a little bit. And so it's basically, you know, once you're on a roll, it encourages your roll to go on. <laughs> so you have these extreme highs and then you're chasing that high again. Now it's not the same because you're not paying for anything, any kind of modifiers, it's to do skill. <clears throat> but um, yeah, you know, they're also taking advantage of highs and lows and, and um, uh, dopamine, dopamine dumps and stuff like that. Yeah. Cell games. It, it's just interesting to see, like, obviously that I don't think that's predatory in the sense of like, obviously it's like money. Right. But if you, when you discern call of duty to counter strike, which people have done a bajillion times before, you don't get a kill streak in counter strike. You don't get any of that kind of stuff in counter strike. You just get rewarded monetarily. And then you can buy in game guns for that. And that's it. Meanwhile, call of duty, is just like, you're constantly moving. You're constantly doing shit. So, I don't, like, yeah, I don't but know. there's a lot to look at with Counter Strike too. I mean, they really popular popularized the whole loot crate system. And oh man, yeah, that's yeah. that that's gnarly as shit. It's been banned in like multiple countries too. Yeah. All right, let's move on to highlights. So these are the games that we have been playing. Nick, why don't you start us off with War Thunder? This will be pretty quick. Um, I log into War Thunder as I do at least like once every two months to kind of check what's going on uh, in the game. I don't know why I do it to myself, but I just do it. Um, I decided to play the American Airplanes, which have been fun. Uh, however, uh, I noticed a lot of things have changed as far as how you uh, not how you unlock um, planes, but the order in which you unlock them now. Um, for example, I got to tier five of uh, German planes. Um, and now when I log in and look at my German planes, I, all my unlocks are in tier four and I can't unlock anything in tier five until I unlock three more tier four planes, uh, which is normal. But the thing is I already unlocked tier five planes and they kind of like, uh, took me out of that by adding new planes and changing me, uh, the tier system. Uh, and apparently that is a very well-known thing that the company do, Gaijin does, and it's called being Gaijin. Uh, they do it in all their games, apparently. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, War Thunder, still pretty game. They have new game modes involving uh, uh, naval battles now. Uh, they've had naval battles. They've had deep sea naval battles and, um, and uh, like shallow water naval battles but now there's an arcade mode for it so it's a lot faster instead of dying and then spawning and then uh just leaving the game once you die um so yeah uh it's free uh if you just got a brand new computer and you don't have any money to buy games and you don't own any other game war thunder is like one of the best fucking sinks of time ever uh behind like league of legends and some other free-to-play games uh check it out that's it it's also, a lot of DLC uh, on this game. It's not, what's weird is like it's not their money DLC. Somehow, man. It's not DLC. It's you buy boosts in whatever faction you want to buy. Um, any of those tanks that you see as "quote unquote" DLC, you can unlock normally. Um, but I don't, the only thing I wanted to bring up, but it's not going to be a real discussion, is why the fuck does this game have a battle pass? Like I'm like looking at how do you unlock further into the battle pass. And it's like, play tier three uh, ships. I'm like, dude, I don't even have a tier three ship. I don't even have a tier two ship. And to get to tier tier three would take months. But that's probably I'm because like, you're not into ships, right? You're like, you're really into the tanks, aren't you? Yeah, the tanks and, the, and sometimes the planes. But the thing is, like, you can't advance in the battle pass unless you do the mm. ships. You know what I'm saying? And no, yeah. like, you can't focus on every single aspect yeah. of the game, like the naval fucking they split ships into two and then they split aircraft into two now too there's helicopters which that's are its I, own fucking thing that's what i like about the battle pass in um magic the gather in arena you can you can re-roll uh yeah you can re-roll your quests yeah it's once awesome. a day and yeah. it's fun yeah i mean usually i don't have to because usually i have a, a you know a deck for everything but whatever yeah it's nice it's a nice option like that you should definitely be able to re-roll that one that's ridiculous yeah 
it, it, what's funny is you can you can re-roll it, but you can't re-roll the category. So you can change the mission, but it'll still be a tier three ship mission. Yeah. Instead um, of being destroy ten ships, it'll be like destroy three ships in one life. Nick, do ships fight planes in that game? Um, so there are these things called uh, scenarios. They're either arcade scenarios and or there's realistic scenarios, and they're like um, like actual battles that occurred in history. Um, mm. The numbers are just skewed to be a little bit more uh, fair. Fair, right? It's not going to be like three thousand Americans versus four hundred Germans. Uh, but yeah, there are there are uh, battles where you can launch off of aircraft carriers. I don't believe the aircraft carriers are controlled by uh, by players. But the battleships are, and so like you can take off in your plane and things like that. So it's pretty cool. There's also battles where you do tanks and helicopters and planes, uh, which is pretty sick. That's the cool thing but, about fucking Battlefield, dude. Like, there's just uh, well, when Battlefield's done right, it's just like, a, fucking whatever. Shoot a fucking shoot a boat with a fucking tank. Let's see yeah. what happens. Fuck it. When is the next Battlefield gonna come out, man? Well, it's, it's been a hot minute. I think they're reeling from their last one, right? They're, the future the Pacific, one really the, bombed. The future one? 2042 or something. Oh, yeah. They oh, really oh, bombed. Yeah. So I think they're reassessing over there what they do. Step one, I, don't make a game every year. That's Of step course. One. You can't make a Battlefield game every year. I yeah. Think. They, they were trying for a long time. I mean, Battlefield, Battlefield 1 was a slap. Like, that, that was good. Mm-hmm. And then Battlefield, the World War II game that came out after that was really good, but yeah, the future Battlefield was fucking awful. So, mm. yeah, I don't know about Tell this about future Rogue, buddy. Okay, this week I was playing Spell Rogue. This game's been kind of on the radar for me for a little while here. Um, it is published by Ghost Ship Games. The uh, uh, the developers that made Deep Rock Galactic, they started publishing games. And I'd like to think that they only publish good games. So that was kind of a mark of quality for me. Um, but this is a roguelike, I guess technically a roguelite, um, a turn-based roguelike. So the combat breaks down a lot like... Um, I don't know, it looks like uh, Darkest Dungeons almost. But what's interesting about this game is the way that you cast actions is by rolling dice, and then those dice can be used to cast different spells. So you'll get a spell that says you can only cast this with a number six, or this spell you can cast with any two dice, but... um, if you do, if you cast it with seven, like a three and a four, then you'll get to roll another dice on top of it. So it's really, it feels like gambling and it makes it a lot of fun um, when you're playing because you, you're rolling the dice, hoping you get something good and then trying to figure out with what you rolled, what to put in each slot to make the best round or, or turn there and of course it's got all the things that every roguelike does you can upgrade these spells you can get new ones you can get items and um other things they call rituals just like different types of upgrades it's got that same kind of map that they've got in slay the spire where it branches off into different paths and there's item shops and all this stuff like it's all pretty standard the the really unique thing about it is the dice and it and especially because I've been playing a lot of TCGs, the idea of RNG or randomness in games has really been on my mind. <clears throat> you got to have just the right amount to make it exciting, but not too much to make it feel like there's no skill or strategy involved. And I think Spell Rogue does a good job of this. Um, I really enjoyed it. I um, After the it's kind of strange. So after the first run, I was like, man, this is a really good game. I like this. And I played another run and I went all the way through and um, I guess I beat it. But you know, when you beat it, it's intended to uh, be beaten many times. You unlock different characters, different abilities, the difficulty increases, all that stuff. Um, So beating it once isn't like actually beating the game. But after that first, uh, after the first time I beat it, I was just like, huh, okay. It's kind of lost a lot of its it's appealed to me for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I've just played too many of these roguelike games. I'm in the same boat, dude, with Bellatro right now. Uh, first of all, yeah, this looks really good, and the price is right, dude. Like, um, e- even if you're gonna play it the one time, was it worth twelve seventy nine, Bobby? 
I feel like it probably I think so. And, and I'll yeah. probably come back to this because there's so many different things I haven't explored, so many different attack types. Um, there's uh, it's some sort of countdown mechanic that I have no idea how that works. So I, I have a feeling I'll be coming back to this, trying different characters and, and enjoying the game in different ways. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, wish listed. Yeah, and, sure. you know, I thought, I thought you had played this, I, or maybe it came up on the radar or something, but I, I don't think this is the first time we've ever talked about Spell Rogue on the I podcast. I can't think. Well, there's so many similarities, dude. There's like dicey dungeons. There's, um, I've, I've, I think I've played three dice based roguelikes. Um, and then I'm playing a card based one right now. Um, is that Bellatro. I, oh, yeah, no, Bellatro. Bellatro. I'll get into it right now. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to play this. I like this. Um, but yeah, I just beat Bellatro, beat Bellatro the first time. Um, and it's funny because, like, Last week, I was talking about getting these crazy combos and feeling like it was Monster Train. And this time, when I beat it, I just got really good cards. And they had nothing. I wasn't clever. You know, it wasn't my cleverness that won the day. It was uh, getting these sick-ass cards and getting mul multipliers. Apparently, there's multipliers, and then there's, like, total multipliers. So, like, uh, you get, like, X uh, mul, M uh, M U L T X uh, four would be multiply by four, right? But then there's like X point one two, which takes your total at the very end and then multiplies that. And if you have two two of those, it just multiplies a multiplier, and then you know that's when you get exponential growth. Anyway, I was hardly even playing. Like uh, I, I had multiple of those, and uh, all I had to do was make a pair, and it was enough to like. I was multiplying by 119, and so it, it was just crazy. So it got me to the point where I was like, well, I mean, like, if, it, if it's more likely that I'm going to beat the game by luck and not skill, then I am less interested. But then again, I had 15 minutes before this podcast and I loaded it up yet again. I'm going to have to delete that fucker, dude. Like it's got to go because it's um, the only reason I was playing it is last week. I said I wasn't going to play it anymore because I feel like it's a time waster. So I started downloading control, you know, that game that came out. It was an Epic exclusive. So a lot of people didn't play it. So I, but it was 42 gigs and you know, that was going to take me like five minutes or something. So I was like, oh, I'll play some Bellatra. Yep. Played that all the way up at, for the last two hours before the podcast so um but it's a good game um the big not a question mark but um the uh the big randomizing factor i guess the fun part are the jokers the jokers are the things that change the game and you could have five jokers active and uh, when I was looking at my unlocks, I was like, oh, I already have 12 of 15 of these, and I already have 10 of 20 of those. I'm like, I'm already halfway there. I only beat the game once. And then I looked at the Jokers, which is the fun part of the game, I'd say, and I only have like 25 of 150. So I was like, okay, if anything makes me come back, it would be unlocking more Jokers. Just like you were talking about more characters and more spell types. Um, I think it's kind of like the same thing. Uh, one question, Bobby. So uh, when you roll your dice in, uh, what is it? Spell, spell Rogue. Spell Rogue. Um, that one roll applies to your multiple spells? Like you're not rolling for each individual spell? Uh, no, you roll three dice. But of course you can get upgrades that let you roll four or more. And then you can use those dice on any spells that you want. So like, gotcha. I, I have a block spell that takes a one through three and you can also re-roll you have a, a spell where you can re-roll three times so yeah there's a, a lot of different ways a lot of different ways you can play your turn gotcha but obviously you're going to favor <laughs> you're going to favor your best spell right obviously if if you roll whatever i mean all the spells favorite. are pretty good because you you're not going to equip them if they're not good you may have like an aoe spell you may have one that does a lot of damage you may have one that uh 
lets you roll an additional dice next turn, and you may have one that has block. There's all it's situational. Sort of thing. Yeah, it's very situational. Uh, but I would imagine sometimes you roll something you can't do shit. You just sit there and face tank. I'm guessing. Mm, maybe at the early game. No, not really. I mean, no? unless you build your your abilities really poorly, you're always going to be able to do something with ro- mm. what you roll. It may not be like the best, but you're, you're still going to be able to do something. Oh, obviously, yeah. You want to build a hand or whatever that covers all the bases. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever. Yeah, yeah I get it. Ah, uh, what you got, Nick? Oh, yeah, oh no, we're it. all done. So, we're uh, all done, but there's a there's a final thing there that. Yeah, we've is, talked about. Is. I've talked about magic way too much, Bobby. What did you think of Commander? Uh, Bobby <laughs> came over, and Chad came over, and we played Commander, and that was my first time playing Commander with more than two people, and boy, is it exponentially fun. I think. Yeah. Than, no, than it, the, the politicking is so much. I didn't it's even know, so dude. Fun. So uh, at one point of the, here I go. Hey, Bobby, talk. Uh, here I go. Um, it's, no, at one it's, point I was like, Bobby, if you guarantee to do this one thing, I won't do this other thing. I didn't know if that's like allowed. I guess it is, right? Because we're people and we're just politics. Yeah, of course. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I found that part really fun. Anyway, Bobby, take it away. <laughs> take it away. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got some shit to talk about Commander as well, by the way. Oh, God. All right. Um, Well, yeah, it was my first time playing Commander and also playing with multiple people. And first of all, Magic is a very verbal game, I'm noticing, Um, compared to uh, Lorcano, which I I mostly play. Like, you really have to, uh, because you can do things on somebody else's turn, um, you really, there's a lot of communication that happens. And... um, I don't know. Not sure how I feel about that. But with three players, it gets pretty interesting because I was playing a sliver deck and I feel like that would have only that works best with three players. I I feel like if that was a one on one situation and all the attention of my opponent was going to be focused on me, I wouldn't have been able to uh, spread as (laughs) as well as I did. But yeah, it was a good time. Oh, go ahead. I do have a quick question for you guys, because uh, obviously you guys played with like different decks and shit. Did any of you guys have any cards that forced people to do things to your other opponent? Hmm. <clears throat> so, for example, there's a mechanic called Goad, uh, yeah. and it's on a bunch of commander cards where if you attack somebody and you hit them, that person has to hit any other opponent besides you. Oh, there was a card like that. I remember yeah. something yeah. happening like that. Those yeah. cards are fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, a lot of interesting things happening. So Emilio and Chad were playing with the Fallout decks, and it was all Fallout themed. And I didn't realize that you could play those against just normal Magic cards or other Commander yes. decks. Apparently, mm-hmm. it's all they, they're all compatible. So that that was cool. Um, but it is, you know, I. I said for a while, like I started out playing that Star Wars game in the 90s and it that one was super compl- complex and confusing. And I thought when I had played Magic a couple years ago that uh, it wasn't as complicated as I thought, but then playing Commander, it is way more, way more complicated. It's, um, I, I guess it's the same thing. Like really the, the thing to me is being able to do something on someone else's turn complicates things exponentially. Um, yes. Yeah. And then what, what phase of that person's turn Mm -hmm. and then other people can stick their nose in that action. So yeah, it gets pretty complex. Um, so my, my little thing about commander that I want to talk about real quick. Uh, so I also own the fallout, uh, commander decks. I got to play with all four of them. Uh, me and Leslie have been playing, uh, we've only been playing one of you one. Um, so uh leslie's birthday is coming up and i was like you know what i'm gonna try to build a commander deck but i'm gonna set my budget to 120 dollars because when you get too high in a budget you keep seeing the same cards in commander decks so you don't really see like a variance right it's like oh these are these are cards that are staples you sh- everybody should get and all this stuff you don't really like take and pull you this know, your you, popper you know, deck yeah, well, it's not popper at all. Yeah, right. There's right, some, there's like a there's like an eighteen dollar card. There's a couple eighteen dollar cards in there and some other shit. Um, so I built her an elephant themed deck. The whole oh, that's cool. all, all like almost all the creatures are elephants. I think all but two are elephants. 
um, which is pretty awesome. And then a bunch of the some of the spells are elephant based as well. Like destroy target creature, that creature's controller creates a three three elephant token. Um, and so I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool. She loves elephants. I got her an elephant deck box. I got her elephant sleeves. Uh, and I was like, all right, cool. She can play this deck. I did not realize how much stronger a custom magic deck, even at a price of one hundred and twenty dollars, is compared to one of these pre constructed decks, dude. No way, dude. She destroy i had i could have drawn the perfect card drawn the perfect cards i still would have lost that's how bad it was Damn. so she has a so her whole thing is that she gets one one counters her commander makes all creatures cost one colorless less for each one one counter each creature with a one one counter on it and when you have nine creatures with one one counters on them you can cast creatures for one mana like it's yeah. insane um and so like I, I was playing the Lord of the Ring, one of the Lord of the Rings decks because I hadn't played it yet, and I was like, okay, like my creatures are indestructible. Okay, my creatures do this, and she's like, here's a fourteen, fourteen heading at you. Here's a fucking thirteen, twelve. I'm like, dude, what do I do? like? I can't do anything. Um, and so I, in response, am buying myself a Devil deck. <laughs> it's nine hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> no, it's I gave myself the same budget, hundred and twenty bucks. It's all devils, demons, and imps. And so uh, the commander for it is one of my favorite com- uh, characters from Baldur's Gate 3. His name is Raphael. He's a devil. Uh, he's one of the coolest characters. So, yeah. Nice, man. Um, Bobby, you down to play some more? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll probably be available next weekend, but not Saturday. Got a little Connor tournament. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> cool. Uh, have you upgraded your deck? Uh, yeah, I, I got a completely different deck I'm going to be trying out. It's not an expensive one, though. I don't expect to do that well, but I, I've been playing with it online, and it actually, it, it's not too bad. So, How cool is that, dude, that you can, like, play test, see if it's worth spending money, and then pulling the trigger, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, Pixelborn so cool. is great. I think it saved that TCG. Yeah. All right, let's move on to On the Radar. So these are games that have come to our attention recently that we are interested in playing. Emilio, you're up. Bobby's not interested in any games ever. Yeah, I had, no, I mean, unless it's something that I really feel strongly about, I'm not going to put it on there. I had a lot in the uh, worth of ping section. So, um, Exxon TD Uprising. Um, this is a tower defense game, and it actually looks really good. Uh, thank you, Rusty Bagels. Uh, he uploaded this to our discord you can get to our discord to dlgaming.net and then click on discord and join and from there you can go to like on the radar that's where you put things like that you're interested in you can go to the hangout where everybody hangs out you can go to i don't know all kinds of shit uh movies uh, fucking everyday life all kinds of stuff it's a good place to hang out um anyway so axon td uprising um it's right now a 91 percent with 202 reviews um and it's in early access so that's that's a good that's a good combination there um it has a um co-op survival and i thought it was pretty interesting how it works so the enemies the axons have to go through your level and your your teammates level um in order to score and so um, I, I, Matt, I was like, oh, that maybe that's boring. Like you got to wait for them to get through your buddies to get to yours. But, uh, I think they go into yours at the same time. So, and then they cross over to the other person. So you can pick up slack or you can work on combinations together. I thought that was cool. Um, and, and you could send each other resources, which, you know, maybe one of you is, um, farming resources and the other one's doing the damage um anyway i thought it was very cool um not just that but a lot of their towers and axons are uh, very unique i've never heard of a lot of this stuff there's a couple of just of the examples here are so there's a plasma ball um that travels slowly in a straight line it's a big plasma ball and I'm like, oh, okay, I've seen things like this before. It does damage slowly in a straight line, um, which doesn't always work because, you know, the 
the routes that the enemies take aren't always straight. Uh, but not only does it do that, but if it passes through any of your other towers, it buffs those. So if you, you know, if you're going to go with this plasma ball heavy combo, you just line up all your towers in a straight line. Uh, the other thing is you're uh, about this game is you're making the route. It It's not preconceived routes that the game makes like almost all other um, tower defense. Uh, you choose where to build out and what direction the enemies are going to have to go through. Uh, I thought that was, I've seen it before, but um, that with, the other cool ideas in here uh, has me excited about a tower defense, which is crazy. Um, another tower that I liked was the drone leeches. Uh, this is not the actual name, so I, I didn't write that down. But um, So it's kind of like on the floor, and when they roll over it, um, a drone comes out and starts leechy, leeching resources off of them. It pulls the metal off of them, it pulls the energy off of them, and it adds it to your to your resource i thought that was very cool um the enemies they have some really cool enemies too um there is like this spider thing that runs around faster than the other ones and then it telescopes its legs so it kind of makes itself higher than the other ones so the other ones can pass under its legs and then it has this huge dome that it throws out and it slows down all the towers around it i don't know if it does it randomly or what but um yeah what a cool idea and then there was this uh, really fast action that um, ran, uh, hopefully randomly grabs, I say hopefully because maybe it grabs a big slow one, but it'll tow the other ones. So it'll pick one up and just run through the map with it at its pace, kind of like a taxi. And uh, that's trouble. You don't want a really big, heavy boy being run through very quickly. So... Uh, these are things that I've never thought about before and uh, never seen before. So, yeah, I'm probably going to pick this up. Hmm. It looks very unique. Yeah. So it's from the like makers it. of Element TD2, which I believe was originally a Warcraft 3 mod, a very popular one. And then they yes. made a standalone yes, yes. game that did pretty well on Steam. I'm surprised more people aren't buying this. Well, this came out August of 2023 this has been out for a while yeah and, and it's also an early access so a lot of people stay away when um when that's the case oh it was a little tr pricey 20 bucks yeah 20 bucks in early access that was a little steep for a tower defense game but you know. i think that's how much element td is too yeah interesting all right nick what you um got? Uh, it's not really like a super long on the radar. Uh, going to be really quick. I uh, just wanted to announce that Manor Lords is releasing this month, April 26th. For those who don't know, Manor Lords is, uh, this might be your first episode, Manor Lords is a game that is very similar to Mountain Blade Warba Warband, but it features way more city building and city management. Um, from what it looks like, you start from like literally like a town of like three villagers and you can build it up to like a full size fucking like fief. Um, it involves like real time combat, real time strategy, along with like city management and like uh, politics and things like that. It's being made by like I think one guy, and uh, people have been super excited for this for a while. Um, but yeah, April 26th, no price information yet, uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, other things that are coming this month uh, Fallout TV show, Fallout London, uh, those are the other highlights I have. That's about it. Wait, Fallout. What's Fallout London? Oh, that's the um, uh, that's yeah. done by their own devs, right? Uh, I mean, like it, it's like a mod, kind of X X dev. Um, I would say it wouldn't say X devs. It's not an official release. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So that Fallout London is supposedly the like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, mod uh, for Fallout Four ever. Um. It is apparently the the whole fall I mean, Fallout London content is as big as the main quest line in Fallout Four. Um, it's a complete overhaul. You get to like learn about um, like what Europe's version of yeah the non-American vaults exactly not yeah. like non-American vaults um, and like what they had. I think it's called the PAL system. Uh, it adds 
a shit ton of new armor weapons uh systems new perks uh all kinds of stuff uh it's, a, it's almost like a complete overhaul to be honest um so yeah i would definitely check that out if i were you guys if you like fallout apparently the install of the mod is not the hardest thing in the world uh you just got to watch a youtube video is it paid like, no it's not paid Jeez. um so we'll see i'm yeah. definitely i'm definitely gonna test it out it's been in development for over three years now so we'll see Excited. all right so christian is not here this week so we're not going to be doing guess that sound tune in next week and uh, we'll see if somebody finally won the uh, 100 what are we up to? $100 in Steam credit? Stakes yeah, are getting high. I believe so, yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got a ton of listener questions here. Because we don't have Christian here today, we're not going to get to all of them. Um, so if you don't hear your question from this week, do not worry. We will get to that next week. Uh, first one from Time Killer B. How often do you deep clean your PC? Uh, once every six months, I will take out the panel, blow it all out, and then I'll clean my hard drives digitally. I'll see if there's any uh, repeat files. I will look at my download file. I'll look at uh, product production files, video files, and make sure that nothing that I don't need anymore is there. That's it. Hmm. Um, you're supposed to clean these things. I've literally never cleaned this thing. Yeah, maybe it's once. In your garage too. That thing is probably uh, filthy. Yeah. It's probably <laughs> this garage. I mean, this room particularly is not that bad. But yeah, maybe maybe it's time for a cleaning. Um, yeah. I would say I, once or twice per ownership of that PC. I, I mean, I upgrade every like three years, two, you know, something like that. So, hmm. fuck it. Buy a new I'm gonna one. be upgrading at the end of this year for sure, dude. Yeah, um, playing playing. Um, Cyberpunk was like, what am I? Yeah, I, I need to upgrade. Hmm. That's a good time to do it. I would say I clean my PC maybe once a year. It's been longer than that because I built, maybe not. I think I built this PC about a year ago. Um, but I will say this. So I've got a Fractal Design torrent case and this case is so much better about keeping out the dust than my last case was so i've opened it up a few times because i've had to do something inside and i've just noticed how much cleaner it is how, mm. how much less dust there is inside so the case has really been doing its job but i think in the entire time that i've had it i've maybe taken the air to it once to to clean it all out um, mm. but yeah, it's like maybe once or twice a year that I clean that. It, it kind of depends on what environment you have it into. I, my place tends to collect a lot of dust. Um, so I probably should clean it out more often, but the airflow is pretty good in there. Cool. Nope. Cool. All right. Um, next question from AJ Casper. What games do you recommend for someone new to PC gaming? Hmm. We, we kind of talked about that a little bit last week. Um, it used to be for me Half-Life 2, and that, that's dated now. And not, not only is the game dated, but what you would get out of it is also dated. I used to say that after you play Half-Life 2, you can play 75% of games out there, but that's no longer the case. Um, I mean, still not a bad place to start. Um, let me think about it while these guys talk. Uh, yeah, simple question. I mean, answer Minecraft. Is the Minecraft? Minecraft. Uh, what? <laughs> if you launch it for the first time, the amount of hand holding the game does for you is actually a lot. I don't, uh, I don't know how old move. this guy is, but I don't know if Minecraft is going to interest him. <laughs> you never know. I mean, it's it, it, other than that, millions say, of people love it, dude. So mm, yeah, it the might number not one be a most sold answer. game of all time. See, I don't. I don't even feel like we need to answer this question. You can just go on down to our uh, 
our web page and go to our Steam Curator page, and we've got all the games that we recommend there. Like if you go Boom. through that, <laughs> if you go through yeah, that list, a, a I mean, it's a it, yeah, it's a pretty smooth plug there, but it's also true. Like if you look at that list, those are the games that we played, and we're like, this is really good. And um, it's nice that we have that logged because we forget about those all the time. We play so many games and it's just constant rotation that we oftentimes forget about the good ones. Um, uh, Portal, Portal 2 are not bad ones. Like, it, uh, like me, a Valve fanboy over here. But yeah, just in general, uh, yeah, something free. TF2. There you go. Just play TF2 till you like it. It'll fuck you till you love it. Until you like it. Um, I <laughs> had a curiosity. I, I've got like five bucks in my Steam, uh, in Steam credit right now. And when I was looking for something to play, I was like, I wonder what I could get for five bucks. So I typed in chat GPT, like, hey, recommend me uh, some really good games for under five dollars. And it gave me a response that made me question what we do here every week. I was just like, dude, there's no, like, it just answered everything. It had a nice, uh, it came up with like five recommendations, all of them super solid. And they all had an explanation of what the game was and why it was a good game. And I was just like, it was so concise and to the point. And I was just like, we could never do that. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, dude. Uh, this is why we have to cut our workforce by 20%, dude, like everybody else is doing it. Yeah. But then again, it did suggest all the games you would expect it to. Like I was looking for some deep cuts. So it gave me a list that wasn't really particularly useful to me. I had played every single one of those games it recommended. But um, but you could modify your answers. You could be like, I need you. To, uh, those are all obvious questions. Can you give me deeper cuts? And they will. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I should have tried that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I find sometimes when I get uh, too specific like that, then I start getting weird answers. But, yeah, I, I don't know. If the, what was on that list? Um, Stardew Valley, they said, like, well, it's on sale sometimes. Terraria was on there. Like, all the usual ones you, you would expect. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're new to PC gaming, first of all, you got to figure out what kind of game you want to play. Like, what's what do you enjoy um uh what was the game that christian was recommending a week or two ago against the something it was the city builder oh it sounded really good <laughs> you said christian and city builder it's like saying like you know gun yeah. and bullet dude like you need one without the other or it's impossible to get one without the other Ow. Ow. against the storm that's what it was that one looked pretty good. Um, if you're looking for like roguelike turn-based combat, Darkest Dungeon is a great place to start. You can't go wrong with that game. Um, and I try to, whenever people ask questions like that, I try to give modern games because it's it's easy to recommend old ones, but honestly, people want something new and fresh. But if you're new to PC gaming, like you want to play the games that you haven't been playing on console, like the ones that are a little more unique. You know, like uh, the the Valve games, you've you've probably played those on console before. You need some uh, cyberpunk or some um, some turn-based strategy or some city builders or that stuff you can't get. Um, okay, next question is directed at Emilio. This is from Morconius. He says, Emilio, how did the Da Vinci Code make you an atheist? I don't recall Dan Brown disproving the existence of God, <laughs> or did it turn you into a Protestant? Anyhow, Jesus wasn't white. He was a black Jew. <laughs> uh, well, there's just a lot of, like, questioning of stuff, you know. Uh, it, it wasn't exactly like, oh, I'm an atheist now because I read this. It was like um, that the Last Supper uh, had a picture of Mary Magdalene is in there. It's not just the disciples. And I was like, oh, there's a chick in there? Like, this thing's been in my on the top of my where I eat my entire life. The picture of the Last Supper. My entire life. I never realized that there was a girl here. And then uh, all the hand signals and what they're basically, or what Leonardo was trying to say um, with all these hang signals, like these hidden messages and stuff. And I was like, uh, like, people were, per, people around the world worship this image and this image is full of secrets uh 
telling you not to worship not to worship it basically uh or not to worship the source material um so i thought it was very interesting and so i then i just started looking down more specifics and stuff and then ultimately i think the actual thought <clears throat> that made me an atheist was or at least anti uh established religion uh was that I think my parents made me Catholic because that was the best choice, like the safest choice. Like, I think my kid is going to be good if I give them milk and meat and wheat and religion. And so their parents thought the same and their parents thought the same and their parents thought the same until you get to a point where somebody's parents were forced to be that religion or uh, were desperate to join a religion because they were starving. So it's one or the other. It's like at some point, be somebody down my lineage became Catholic because they were either forced or uh, they had to, most likely. So at the, that was the thought where I was like, oh, uh, yeah, maybe this isn't, may, let me break this mold real quick and then reassess. Not to say that it's wrong, but. Um, yeah, for me, it's wrong. Mm. Cool. All right. That got intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Warconius has another comment here. Uh, he says, last episode, a certain someone mildly suggested the Beatles aren't a big deal. Such <laughs> a thought requires a quick face slap and shake. Given that this can't be done in person, I insist that this person partakes in self-flagellation while listening <laughs> to Hey Jude. I, I read this and I was like, was that me? Did Who said that? I can't remember who said that last week. I can't remember who it was either. It could have very Probably well been me. me. I'm not a big Beatles fan. Neither am I. And I think, like, the reason I thought it was me is because I, every year I go and watch the Oscar shorts, the animated ones, um, the, the short animated films that are nominated for, uh, for an Oscar. And this year, like, they were pretty good. And then there was this one, it, it was one made by the son of like John Lennon and Yoko Ono. And it um, was like, you know, all anti-war and it had a Lennon song in it and it was made with like the unity engine. So it looked like a video game trailer and it was about as shallow as one too. And I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And it's going <laughs> to win the Oscar. And it did, it did because the boomers love Beatles. And I was just so annoyed by that. I'm like, there's so many better choices, but this like, I don't know. I, I was very upset by that. So, I, I've kind of been um, maybe had some resentment towards the Beatles recently that I may have slipped out. But yeah, it's funny that none of us can remember who said that last week. It could have been the Christian. Yeah. Um, nobody likes the Beatles here, apparently. Nobody, no, I nobody do. fucking likes the Beatles. I would say I'm a fan. I'm not a massive fan, but I, I yeah, I think they're, well, I mean, if you, li if you read the book Outliers, it's like they put in way more practice than most bands ever. And it shows, basically. Um, all right, what else we got? Or are we going to skip in everything else till Christian's here? Is no, no, we've got, we've got one more here. So Comfy Unicycle asks, if you could forget everything you know about a game and start fresh, what game would it be and why? Oh boy. So 100% the answer for me would be World of Warcraft. Uh, oh, man. Because cool. not only that game just ruined games for me. That game is why I don't care about story or graphics or really anything except the the bare bone mechanics of a video game now because that game just taught me to crunch and grind and like just put aside everything else about the game and just focus on the task at hand it kind of uh i mean there was gaming before wow and gaming after wow for me mm. fallout 3 probably just because i thought it was so fantastic and there's a little bit of a twist there and you don't know the twist is coming, and they, it was, it was. How do you say this? Um, it changed my prerogative on what a game could be, you know, because um, it was a good story that was told over, like you lived there for a long time, you know. It, um, it, it was something I hadn't played before. I, I wasn't used to anything like that. Not only was there the main quest line, but there was all these other great quests on the way. 
fantastic. It was my favorite game for a long time. That that's man. This is, this is a pretty big question. I would say, you know, Fallout Fallout is one of those good twists. There's Oblivion. There's fucking a bunch of Bethesda games, GTA's. Um, wow is, I don't know. Wow is really good answer, man. <laughs> like to, to just, but the thing is. There are so many things that when I started playing WoW that I wasted so much time doing when I started playing it. Mm. But the thing is, I wouldn't know. Yeah, but it was the discovery. It was the learning process. Yeah, was, yeah I mean, I remember. And learning f- with friends, dude. Yeah, that was another thing. Is learning with friends. Um, I would probably have to say uh, S- Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Only, only because it's such a good game. The DLCs are out, um, and like I really like the game. Uh, I don't like it as much anymore because it's been overplayed to shit. But yeah, I would say Skyrim. All right. What are the? Remind me of the DLCs. There's the vampire one. Uh, there's the homemaking one where there's more buildings. I don't think I ever uh, played that one. <clears throat> uh, there's another one. Oh fuck! There's Dawn Guard, which is a vampire. Hearthfire, which is the Helm one. Dragonborn, which uh, is as big as Dawnborn, but it adds some other stuff involving uh, the Argonian invasion. <coughs> Never played uh, that. Yeah, that's another one. Hmm. All right, uh, we're gonna sneak in one last question from AJ Casper. He's new around the Discord, so uh, we're gonna hook him up here with another <coughs> listener question. What's your most disliked game ever? Mine was Pokemon Pokemon Go because when it first came out, everywhere I went, that's what everyone was talking about or wanted to do. Hmm. Most disliked game ever. Whew. You know, I'm gonna actually change my answer for the last question. Elden Ring. Uh, but most disliked game ever. Oh, man. This is, it's kind of for the same reason, not because it's a bad game, but I just can't get into these Zelda games that are winning game of the year every year or every other year or whatever. Uh, Breath of the Wild, don't get it, man. Played it, tried playing it again, tried playing it again. Why is this so good? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Pyronicle really says don't. Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Uh, yeah i can i can see a lot of our listeners saying that yeah most disliked game ever i don't know because i i usually don't like hate play games so i i can't really think of any that i really hate i know i know mine fallout 76 Uh, i bought that game i paid for that fucking game before it became full price and it wouldn't give me a goddamn refund even though it became free after a month and uh, I played it, and I was like, this is the worst experience I've ever had with a video game. Like, Which on one is time. 76? Is that the open world one? It's the open world one online. It's supposed one. to yeah. be like a multiplayer. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good answer. I'd, I've never played that game, but I hate the idea of that game. I hate that Bethesda was just like, here's all the parts of a game. You figure out the game. Like, no, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, why don't you be a There's game designer company and make a video game and then give it to us? Like, don't give us your bullshit and expect us to like figure it out. There, like, there's, there's a no rumor NPCs why that there's that a rumor why that that happened, and it was they needed a fallout a fallout announcement for that E3, and their investors were expecting one, and because they told their investors they're working on a fallout title, and they were like, ah, Fallout seventy six, and then like. Yeah, and they there was rushed a the trailer and they rushed the game. Yeah. But apparently, it's not terrible now. Yeah, I've heard it's I mean, not a lot anymore. Better. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Bethesda already kind of does that. They release these games that uh, then get fixed later by people who are passionate about making them better and, and modding them. Um, but that was just kind of like, I don't know. I, I felt like they were just trying to get the player to do their job. All Nick, right. What's your schedule like tonight? Tonight, I mean, yeah. it's pretty open. Why? Uh, I'm thinking about like two hours of 76, dude. Me and you. No, I'm not oh, fucking boy. playing Fallout 76. I'm gonna wow. either play Hell Divers or you I'm gonna play heavily modded game. Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> All me, right. Me and Leslie are talking about doing a heavily modded Baldur's uh, Gate 3 run, mm. where it adds uh, like 12 new races, um, 
like over 90 new spells from actual D and D fifth edition, mm. um, a bunch of other shit. So I'm like, yeah, this sounds awesome. So that does nice. sound awesome. So that is what you're going to be playing next week. Baldur's gate three. Yeah. Uh, but modded. All right. What about you, Emilio? I don't know more. Ha- uh, I want to play some hell divers. I'll just say that for now. Hell divers too. Okay. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I, I keep saying cyberpunk, but I'm not playing it. I think I might hold off on the DLC until after I upgrade. Mm-hmm. I'm probably less than a year from upgrading. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to ask chat GPT what the best tower defense games are. Boom. Gem TD. That's all you need. It's mm-hmm. the only game you need. All right. Speaking it for combines- <laughs> Matt Christian, Nick, Bobby, and myself, tower Titty defense titties. Bye.